It's summer in Texas, which means it's watermelon season. Lisa's gonna teach me how to cut this watermelon. Actually, this one's for me, but I got you one. Oh, okay. So when I think of watermelon, I think of like pie wedges with the rind on the outside and you have to take the bites of the watermelon there. Yeah, I can show you how to do that. Um, I'll also show you a different way to cut one too. Okay. For this first way, we're gonna need a long knife. I'm gonna use a cutting board with a grooved section to catch some juice. And we need a large container to hold our slices. I'm gonna have you cut the ends off. We're just gonna get into the watermelon a little bit on both sides. Or cut the ends off. like Cut the ends off so you have a nice- stri Straight through. Yes, straight through. I'm gonna move my hand out of the I'm way of that yeah. knife. Good, spin it around and maybe take a little more off on this end. A little more, okay. Good. A little more. Now, the hardest part. I'm gonna have you cut straight through the middle this direction. So cutting it into halves? Cutting it into halves, yes. Okay, well, my, my knife doesn't go all the way through. Right, so you may have to rotate the melon and try to meet up with it on the other side. <laughs> it's easier said than done. Oh, my third hand appeared. Now I'm going to have you Flip these over on their flat sides, and we're... <laughs> Sorry, you said flat sides. I, I, flat is definitely... <laughs> okay, they're less flat. But I'm gonna have you flip them over on the large side, let's say that, and then cut them in half again. You gotta make sure you have a really long knife. This thing is pretty long. Okay, so I need to do this one. Now, we'll set these aside so you have room to work on the cutting board. We'll leave one quarter of the watermelon on the board. So if you can look at this semicircle, you can imagine three pies out of that, right? If we were to cut it into thirds. Okay. So it's interesting, there's little swirls where it kind of hard. already divides into thirds on this one. Interesting. Yeah. From a flat side, you always want to okay. move, your, move your foods to a flat side. And yeah. you, you could cut like this, we could do that. I would also give you the option to slice first and then wedge. Yeah. It depends on what you think will be easier for you to balance with a knife. I would go ahead and do this, but cutting at an angle can be a challenge. So if you think yeah. that cutting at the angle this way is harder, go ahead and make a slice this direction. Well, why don't we try it both ways? This feels like it would be easier for me, mm -hmm. less risky in terms of accidentally whatever, and I get to size up my piece right now. It's true. That's probably a little thicker than I would cut the slice, but these are your slices, so you do what you like. Oh, man, I like thick watermelon, like okay. porterhouse watermelon. See, that wasn't so hard. Now, this one will be a little wimpy because, you know, there's not a whole lot of fruit there on that side. This is probably one that I would snack on um, <laughs> and not take to the picnic. But I could cut it in half. You could cut it in half, yes and then you can stack them standing up in there and you'll fit a few more, I think. This one still feels like a half to me. Like a half? Okay. Now you can leave these stacked if you'd like and slice them in okay. yeah, together, yeah. Yeah. but just kind of hold them. They're a little slippery, so okay. yeah. So then this is where our thirds come in. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thirds. Some of these may be a little more even than others. All right. So that was one way where I sliced the ribbons first and then thirded them. Mm -hmm. Now we can try it a different way. Yeah. So then it's kind of... Yes. So eyeing that angle can be the challenge. Nailed it! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we've learned something. I've got my piece. <laughs> The catch is with this method too, that you would then have to slice four slices three times. So I think the other method is more efficient and more evenly achievable. Well, I'm gonna cut this one as well in that same kind of way, but in reality, this there's no triangular they, shape. They won't all be triangles. Yeah. They'll be weird trapezoids. It's watermelon and a geometry lesson. Okay, so lesson learned. Lesson learned, definitely slice first, then triangle. Once again, geometric oddity. Maybe a room for one of your little pansy pieces, but not for my <laughs> porterhouse cut. <laughs> Very nice. Say, hey, I cut up a watermelon. Sure did. Now I have watermelon blood all over my hands. <laughs> Let's wash our hands, rinse the cutting board, and we'll try the next way. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you my favorite method of cubing a watermelon. If you want watermelon that you don't just pick up with your hands and snack on, if you wanna make a watermelon salad or just have it with a fork, 
Cubes are nice and convenient. You can make them large cubes or small cubes, depending on the application that you're going to use. So the same thing applies as previously. We are going to make sure that the watermelon is clean. I didn't mention that before, but I did wash the outside of these watermelons. You don't want your knife to go through mud and then into your watermelon. So the watermelon is clean. We need a long knife, cutting board. This time, because I'm going to be discarding the rind entirely, I've got a large bowl. You could put a little trash bag here on your counter to collect the rinds. And then of course you do need a container to hold the chopped up watermelon. So just as before, we're gonna take the ends off the watermelon. This is really just to give us a flat surface to stand the watermelon up. From here, I'm going to take off as much of the rind as possible, shaving down the side of the melon, things like that. And they go in the discard bin without taking too much of the melon off. I don't wanna leave the, the white rind that doesn't taste good, but I also don't wanna take too much of the red away. You're like shaving this watermelon. I am, yes. Seems like more an advanced technique. It is a little bit advanced because carving through the edge of a watermelon here um, can be a challenge for someone without great knife skills. But it is possible and I do find this the easiest way to make watermelon cubes. Why don't you try shaving around? Now you're left-handed so you may want to come to this side. I am left-handed. I'm also tall so I can lord it over the watermelon here so you guys can see how terrible a job I'm doing. Good job. Less good. All right. It's okay. I think smaller sections will help you. So rather than trying to take all of that edge off. Too late. Too late. Oh man. See, we lost a lot of watermelon there. The, the narrower the band you can take off, the better you'll be for keeping your good watermelon flesh. I assume you kind of go and have to trim all the... Yes, then you go and trim all the things down to the bottom. Eventually, you'll get to a point where you need to flip the melon over and trim the very bottom that you couldn't get to before. So. All right, now might be a good time to flip it over on this end and come at the other side. Yeah, the more narrow pieces that you can take off, the less watermelon you'll lose. The closer you get to the middle of the watermelon, the sweeter it usually is. So this stuff right at the rind is usually pretty bitter anyway. We're gonna have this straight down the middle. Would you like to do that? Sure. We'll set this aside. Oh, that's nice and red and juicy in there. We're gonna put it flat side down. From here, there are a few things you can do. It depends on the size and shape of the cube that you would like. Sometimes I'd like to make watermelon fingers, in which case I just make slices this way and this way, and then what comes out are long, watermelon sticks that you can eat. Otherwise, if you want actual cubes, then I suggest slicing in half this way and then cube this direction and that direction and you get large cubes. If you're wanting really small cubes, I suggest cutting smaller portions, slicing thinly and dicing as you would a smaller piece of fruit. So I'm gonna start with fingers. I'm gonna cut these strips an inch, inch and a half, and then I come up with long sticks that I can take to a picnic and eat like this. These can go in a container. All right, so now I'm gonna give this one a try. Flat side down. Flat side down. Okay, so you're gonna make fingers. Okay, patent pending porterhouse watermelon cut. Okay. You can turn the board or the melon or just come at it from a different angle. Okay, fingers supposedly. Mmm. Mmm, he's got chunky fingers. <laughs> So the question really is, at what point does a finger switch to just being a hand cut? Uh, a thumb. <laughs> it's all thumbs. Well, there you have it. Two ways to cut a watermelon, with rind and without. Basic and advanced. Perfect. Well, if you like that, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Mmm. Mm. I got seeds. Pineapple and a geometry lesson. Pineapple? Kind of looks like a dude with like a fryer haircut yes, and the, 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 <laughs> yes. and the bald spot. <laughs> Use that triangle space. Triangle man, triangle man. Triangle man. <laughs> First step of large cube, I want you to cut it this way. But I was gonna do fingers. Oh, you're gonna do fingers, okay. I was taught fingers. <laughs> Fingers it is. Mmm. Mmm. He's got chunky fingers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know I'm sensitive about my fingers. <laughs>